This is a box. It's not your box. It's not my box either, actually. Uh, and in my not box, or in not my box, for this is a box. It's not your box. It's not my box either, actually. And in not my box, I've got another box. <laughs> oh, shit. And in this not my box, which is in not my box, there is not my other box. There's two not my other boxes. And in not my other boxes is 160 something Samsung 25 hours. Which I've got to put together. This is a one off build that I'm doing for somebody. I'm never going to do another one unless you pay me an astronomical amount of money. It's a custom build for somebody who's been very, very good to me in the past. Good friend of mine. And I want to help people so you know I've decided that I'm going to build him a battery now it's going to be a 20s 8p I think it is that's 160 cells which there should be 165 in here because he bought five extra that one's upside down I'll put it right this has to fit in a frame uh, I can't remember what frame it is but I'll put a quick photo of it on screen now now it has to fit, obviously in the battery compartment, and it has to fit in a specific space because there's lips on the uh, on the sides, it has to fit through that compartment and into the battery compartment. Now 160 cells is going to be a bit of a challenge getting them all together. I did a brief sort of a thing, I used Tinkercad and I did a brief sort of a layout and it, it fits <laughs> it fits in theory but I don't know if it fits in practice so I do apologize to the person I'm building this for if it doesn't fit I suppose you could show on it just just push it a bit harder you know anyway I'm gonna get these out Uh, that worried me a bit. <laughs> it was only 19, I thought, ooh! So, these are the five spare. This is just in case. Now, these come from Fogstar. Fogstar Wholesale. Uh, and if they come from Fogstar, I know they are 100% genuine, perfectly good cells. Obviously the UK only, so if there's any problems with one of the cells, you send it back. Simple as that. If you get them from China, you ain't got a clue what you're getting. You really haven't. I mean, when I did the the 26 650s, when I built the packs of those, um, you know, you, you just don't know what's coming. I suppose I better do a cardboard um, model of this just to see if it all fits. They are going to be laid out like this, as in square. They're not going to be stacked. I prefer them like this purely because of heat circulation. Um, if you stack them like this, if you put them like that, then you've got very, very little air circulation in it, not heat circulation, very, very little air circulation in it, and you've got more points of contact. So, I don't like them like that. So I'm going to do my cardboard cutout, and we'll see where we go from there. I had to spend quite a long time fixing the BMS, because the previous owner sort of bodged it. These here are the shunt resistors. Now this is where it measures the current that goes through the BMS. When you're soldering here, which you can see is rather burnt, when you're soldering here do not go across these pieces here because it'll start measuring inaccurate. Uh, because you, you, you're in fact increasing the resistance on these things or decreasing the resistance, or one of the two anyway. Do not solder over those bridges. Now, I, I can't reuse this. Number one, look, it's burnt to shit. It's just burnt everywhere. I can't reuse it. And number two, there's actually solder underneath these. It's, it's flooded underneath. What's wrong with this one? 
it's knackered. I've replaced that as well. <laughs> I mean, luckily I've got a load of spares for these things. This is the general layout of the battery. Which I'm going to look at it that way. So what I've got is, I think I showed you something like 20S and doing the parallel like that. Well that wasn't the original design that I did on the battery. Because of the amount of space that's on this, we're going that way. Does that match up with that? No it doesn't. That one, like that. Because of the original because of the original <laughs> because of the original space uh, I figured out that it wouldn't do or it will do just about 20s along there so 20 cells blah 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 but um, I decided to do it 19 or 18 I decided to do it 16 along there so what we've got is the positive, the negative of the battery is there and then it will go uh, so that's cell number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that section there is 120S pack and then it's linked and then it does another pack there and then it does another pack there, and then it does another pack there. So in actual fact, you've got four packs of 20S. Before I start, two things. Number one is just a simple tip. Uh, when, you're when you're taping something down, uh, fold a piece over so as you can easily rip it off, because otherwise it's a nightmare. And number two, make sure your table's level. Mine is actually bowed in the middle. It, it goes like that. So what I've done is, I've got some... Uh, some of that, uh, put it underneath the mat and that is now perfectly level it's just to make sure because otherwise your battery's going to sag you, you, you know you need to make sure it's level so I'm going to start laying these out and then tape them all up with VHB tape this stuff and then we can solder them all. No, we can spot weld them all. We don't solder in here, we spot weld Tony. Okay. Now when you come in to do these, uh, this one's going to be, it will say that the, the top left corner like that. So you need one strip down there, one strip down there. So that will then attach to there. So you don't need a strip down there, you need a strip down there, you need a strip down there. So that one will then attach to that one. And then that one will attach to that one, blah blah blah. And obviously you need those strips there to attach to the next row. I need a piece on there because I've then got to attach it to the next pack. Uh, like I say, this is going to be, um, we'll have one pack of 20S here, then another pack of 20S there, and then we'll link them all in the middle to share all the load between all of the packs. If you noticed, even I get it wrong. Um, I think it was that one. I got it upside down. And I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to go, I build it like this. I don't do it that way. I do it this way. It, there's no proper way of doing it. There's no correct way of doing it. You do it whichever way makes you feel bloody happy, you know. Anyway, that's one done. So I can put that to one side. And now I've got to do the next one. And then the next one. And then the next one. And then the next one. <laughs>
For anybody who doesn't know, I do suffer with quite bad back problems. Um, and I know for the regulars I keep mentioning it, but I have to keep mentioning it because people keep saying, how long does it take to build it? Well, this has taken me two days. You see, I, I, I can do, some days I can do two hours and then I have to stop for God knows how long. And some days I can only do 20 minutes and then I have to stop for God knows how long. So it all depends, but yes, this has taken me two days just to assemble this. With any battery, it doesn't matter what the voltage is, it's dangerous. In certain circumstances, it's dangerous. Now this, because it's going to be 84 volts, it's very dangerous. If you get something wrong, it's going to kill you. Uh, as it is, it's pretty bloody harmless, you know. It's it's 3.7 volts or whatever the voltage the, 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 the cells are at the minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series connection on there and then I'm going to take the positive and the negative off there and then I'll do the same on that one, I'll take the positive and negative whatever way it is, I don't know uh, positive and negative, positive and negative and then I'll have all those going into one so as all the load is coming off each individual pack so in actual fact we've got eight packs of cells so there's not going to be any parallel links that I'm going to put over it because usually you put the parallel links over the pack, which I'm not going to do. The only downside to it is the balancing sort of thing that I'm going to have to take a tap off that one and that one, and also that one and that one, that one and that one, that one and that one. So it is going to be a bit more tricky, but it, the balancing is a sort of a, a, a sub a sub side of it. I'm not really too but I'm not really too concerned about it. What I want is for this pack to run perfectly balanced when you're draining it, which is what it's going to do. So the first thing obviously I've got to do is cut a lot of nickel strips. I've got to cut 144 nickel strips that wide. 144 which is probably going to take me another two days <laughs> I find this therapeutic to be honest this is a nickel strip and it's exactly the right length when you cut in these strips make sure that I can get the when you cut in these strips make sure that the length you need it to cover obviously all of the button like that and then the length of it is whatever goes over to there, so it's a nice square. I mean, to be honest, that could be a bit bit longer like that, so as that will go perfectly across there. You see what I mean? That needs to be about, what, two millimetres longer. So I'll do that. So here's the nickel strip. So we can put it covering that, and then it covers that. And then that should perfectly line up. Now when you're cutting these as well, um, keep one, just, just have one as a pattern. Just a single one. And then you get your nickel, it's going to be hard to do this on camera, you get your nickel strip, your patterned nickel strip, put it across on the top, push it up to the top, get your scissors, there's one way where the scissors will just butt up to it like that. So you butt it up, cut it, get rid of that one, get rid of the bottom one, and then use the pattern one again, and do exactly the same thing, butt it up, and cut it. Butt it and cut it. <laughs> I've got 160 nickel strips here that I've cut out. Uh, I'm going to flatten them all off because when you cut them, that happens. You don't want that because you can't get them level, you can't get them flat. That, I like everything just perfect. So you get one of these, space these out so they're not overlapping. Although they probably are in some places, I don't care. And then carefully put that down there and then just flatten them off and it works perfectly so you just keep going around 
of flattening them. And then you'll find that they, they stick to the back of the, uh, the scraper and they just drag all over the place so there was no point in actually laying them all out properly in the first place um, and then it makes a right mess and you're back to square one I know, I know it's a bit, bit anal and a bit bloody sad but I'll get them all together in one big long pile and then I'll put them in the vise and flatten them off this hurts actually, <laughs> sorry right that's the initial one done so what I'll do now I might do 50 at a time, but I get them, just shuffle them all up like that, flatten them all off, get them into a strip, and then I get my voice, and I flatten them even further. There you go, look. Don't they look so much better than the crimpled up shit that I've actually seen people using? A, a bloody corners, sharp edges, well these have got sharp edges, sharp corners lifted up and god knows what. The next thing I've got to do is, as a double precaution, I don't know if I've got enough, I think I have. Uh, I've got to cover every one of the positive cells. So I've got to methodically peel these things off, 160 of them which aren't perfectly cut so they take, <laughs> take quite a while <laughs> this is another job only you have one of those jobs oh god I've got to do that the positive and the negative on, on these is about a millimetre away from each other squirrels die and shit like that so save the squirrels and do it properly so what I'm going to do now which I should have done before is check every single voltage all 160 cells now what I've got to make sure is that they're round about 10 millivolts uh, maybe 20 millivolts um, sort of balanced I'm amazed how balanced these are they're actually reading no more than 10 millivolts difference that is fantastic so um, I'm losing my voice again now um, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start spot welding now. So what I'm gonna do is the series connections. We'll say on that pack, and then I'll do them on that pack, and then that pack, and then that pack, and then off here I'm gonna take a spur from there, spur from there, spur from there, spur from there, link them all together, and also on the negatives. That's exactly what I'm going to do on that as well. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I, I, I have to explain this every time because there are there are people on here who haven't actually seen the videos before and there is a video which I'll put a link in the description where I go on about everything with a spot welder is to do with the power source. It doesn't matter what, spell, what spot welder you've got. If you haven't got a proper power source, it ain't going to work. Now, the tips, don't sharpen them, uh, make sure that they're blunt like that. They've got to be clean, but, but don't please don't sharpen them, because what happens is, as soon as you put that on top of your, of your cell, so we'll say we're doing that one, as soon as you put your, um, your tip on there, it goes straight through it, and you don't want that to happen, you need this to fuse to the metal rather than actually blowing a bloody hole straight through it. If you have a spot weld on there, you sharpen the put if you sharpen the points on that and you put a spot weld on there and it's a millimeter square, you got all the current running through that one millimeter. You know, the, 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 wherever the point of contact is is where the current actually flows through. So you'll have one millimeter carrying all the current. If you've got blunt tips like this and you've got enough current then it puts a far bigger spot weld and far better current handling. Don't sharpen the tips please. I've seen people with a bloody spot weld so sharp it's unreal and they wonder why that everything gets hot. This is the reason why the terminals get hot is because that's where all the currents flowing through obviously but you've got it in such a small, spa a small space that's why it gets hot. 
So the bigger the spot weld you can do, the better, and the more you can do, the better, obviously. So my first one, I've got a negative there, so I've got I'm going to do a positive on the underside, but I'm doing this side first. So my main negative is there, so the first positive is going to be across these two here, and then come back up, and then the first the first link I'm doing on this side is across there. So that's across those two. If you need a reminder of I need to do that one, get one of these needle magnets and put it across there. So we've got negative to positive to negative to positive, which is that link there, negative to positive underneath, and then up here that link across there so that'll be that one and then the next one goes underneath there and then I've got to do another one there once you've done it a few times you, you only cock up once <laughs> and then that's gonna go underneath there and then that'll be that one there I've run out of little magnets but you know you get the idea so if it makes you happier hold them on with magnets so as you know exactly what you're doing here we go you see this magnet here, look. I'll put the magnet there. I'll put it there. Watch it. <laughs> they dance around because the electromagnetic bloody field is. <laughs> what I'm doing at the minute is testing the, uh, the pulse width. Uh, around about 12 maybe 14 milliseconds because this is actually 0.3 mil nickel oh and, and also when you touch when you're holding these it won't hurt don't be afraid of it the worst that you'll do is burn your fingers because these do get hot they can get very hot but if you're worried about holding these and pressing the the pedal at the same time it won't you won't feel a bloody thing I'm not on about it'll kill you, but you won't feel it purely because it's only 12 volts. It's not not very high voltage at all. Um, and the other thing as well, which I need to explain, the way to tell between fake nickel and pure nickel, this is 99.9% .9 nickel or thereabouts. Um, some spot, some nickel strips are actually tin with a nickel coating on them. Now when you spot weld, it burns straight through the nickel and then it goes into the tin. The tin is the one that causes a spark. So if, you get in load, if you're getting loads and loads of sparks when you start spot welding, it means that you've got nickel coated tin rather than pure nickel like these are. Now these tips, I've knocked it up to 14 milliseconds now. Uh, these tips, uh, they are hot. Uh, the wires aren't so hot that's not so hot but the tips do get hot now what I suggest is I've just done that piece here leave it leave it 10 minutes let the whole thing cool down but what happens is as the heat's generated the resistance goes up and you don't get as much current going to the, the, the spot weld so it doesn't generate a good enough spot weld now also what I do is while they're cooling down is I just I clean the tip and with the tip itself is cold now but this bit still is still warm but I just get a file and I back file just to clean all the crap off the end now the other thing I do while it's all cooling down give you a bit of time to do other things is I get a screwdriver and I bend on the positive tabs I bend them down uh, that's purely so as you've got nothing actually sticking up anywhere. You want to keep as much things <laughs> internal as you can. And also I'll go over everything to make sure that, uh, like I can feel a bit of a lip on that. I'll make sure that that's completely flat. Just get your screwdriver and just poke it down a bit. You don't want anything sticking out at all. As you've seen, I've done the other side now. Um, 
For the people who wanted to know why, I think on the last one when I said that I'm folding these things in, uh, I've done a few more welds on that. I'm folding those in for a couple of reasons. Is number one, it doesn't stick out, and you know you can rub your fingers across it. And the second reason is there's more contact area on the actual button itself because it's I've, I've squeezed it down and pressed it in. So it's actually, there is more contact area, and the more contact area, the less heat generation and the more current you can carry through it. So, someone said, why don't you just cut a semicircle on it? Uh, no, because of that, I've got, I can't really show you that clear, but there is in there a lot more contact area, well not a lot, more, the more is better. Anyway, I've got to do the second side now. Now obviously this is the point where it becomes dangerous. Uh, <sighs>